Welcome to the Pursuit of the Perfect Race. I'm Coach Terry Wilson, and with each episode, I bring stories of athletes to you that share their experiences at races in order for you to learn how to have your perfect race. We will hear stories from athletes of all ages, abilities, and races of all distances. So regardless of where you fit in, there's something in there for you. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now let the pursuit begin. Uh, I don't really train much in like a zone two. 
uh, the type of variant. For the most part, it's really zone one and, and really zone four. I would say that it's like those all out or, or a nice, easy pace to get in that gray area. So, yeah, 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 exactly. I think there's not much, uh, there's not much to be gained by like kind of doing it in the middle where you're not really pushing a lot, you're not really just, you know, locking down. Yeah. So, even with the four zone system, the top and the seven and eight, they all have this gray area that you want to stay out of. It's very simple. So, what uh, about the other trades? What workouts did you do that gave you the most confidence to actually do this race of race team? I think confidence wise, well, we got a lot more open water swings in. So, with Connecticut, I really, I think I got into open water maybe twice. So, I was pretty nervous um, going into Connecticut. Being that swimming was definitely a weakness of mine. But with the first race, oh, my God, we got a, a ton of uh, the various swimming. We got bees, we got a sound, there's a couple of lakes. So we had an open water a lot. My sighting was definitely getting a lot better. And just being out in the, you know, murky, bottomless water, it was a lot more comfortable this time around. So I didn't really have as much butterflies. <laughs> so I took a little out of New York type of uh, ocean water, nice and murky. So, you live in New York City, basically? No, so I live in Long Island, so I'm probably about an hour outside of the city. Okay. So, uh, let's take a look at deep more into the fun stuff of this race. Um, you picked my use rate quite a bit. Aside from training and racing, what else do you have on your plate? So, I am uh, actually an air traffic controller trainee right now. Training. So, uh, you yeah, got training, so it's a. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it is. Thank you, brother. Whenever our team guy says he and me are not air traffic controller, that's all I'm going to do. I don't know. I'm horrible. I don't watch much TV, so I can't. Uh, I never really got into that. Well, I'm a horrible TV person. Yeah, yeah, but they play for their job. And they're trying to control me. They get together. That's all I got. Gotcha. Yeah. Go ahead, though. You're going to say something else. Um, but yeah, I mean, where I am right now, I, my girlfriend was like, actually, the job is just so complicated. So I'm basically waiting to start training. There's like a backlog. So I'm doing some kind of side work within air traffic control right now, uh, which is good. This is Give me like a good amount of time to get my training in. I still do have weird work hours. So I could have in any week starting at 3 o'clock until 11 o'clock at night. I had overnight shifts. I had some at 6 in the morning shifts. So they kind of, my schedule was varying a lot. So that was definitely a uh, pretty big variable within training. Uh, more on it or bigger weeks for 12 to 14 hours. And those are good training here. You know, you're biking up to 60 miles, and you're on this road at 13. That was a $60 dollar outside or inside? Uh, that's what's all inside. I didn't actually get out on the bike uh, on the real road once this entire, this entire set of training block. And you feel like you have a lot of time to get out of that bike? Yeah, actually, I, I felt pretty good. It's funny because my coaches don't even know this, but. Uh, I got a little bit of an hour on this. I don't know how to this. But uh, so I, got, I, I have a road bike and I got a clip on an hour on for this race. And I never really thought about it. You know, I kept training on the trainer. I felt much more comfortable being able to, you know, really go hard and just focus on riding and not traffic and stuff like that. But as I was trying through T1, heading to the mountain line, they literally hit me. I'm like, wait a second, I've actually never rode. We've had our bars before. And, uh, you know, to stay the first, like, probably half a mile was, was a little sketchy. Sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to put it. <laughs> well, this is going to be a good segment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to get a little bit to compare to, uh, but the triathlon bikes actually have actual air bars, you know, it's not. So, what does the whole workout week look like? How does everything fit in there? And where do things go? And what does this look like? Well, I definitely try and try to really in the mornings. Um, I would say, normally, to start the week, I would probably have had 
some sort of live stream. Not a bid. Probably half my swim's in the pool, half my swim's in the open water. And uh, when we start the week of some sort of like workouts, so a combination uh, of a couple different drills, uh, pull boost stuff, kick boards, just kind of focus on, you know, form. And we're also typically mix up the training around it. We're always in the same order, but a lot of track work, a lot of sprints, and uh, different sort of like interval training that we're on. The, uh, the trains for workouts were definitely, I got to you know, one, sometimes two of those a week. Uh, I'll be there for you all, I'll be there for you all. I'll be there Some of them, uh, some of those like hour or interval ones were like were pretty brutal. So, uh, so uh, if you guys do want to start telling to the race, uh, if you can have a part of that, it was disappointing. Yes, I did have to take off work. Uh, luckily, I only had to go Saturday, so that wasn't an issue. And we left that morning, and I probably got down to the race. It was like over the line at 11 30. That morning, on Saturday, I'm going to go. All right, so, um, the topic for another day, I think, was something I'm excited to hear about. You're saying it's like 14 hours a week, you're working weird hours, you know, I want to grow in your life and tell me that. How are you balancing all this? Like, there's a different place you have to keep spinning, and you have to get the back end time to train. Your work is a priority, and you're going to have to lift your priority. So, how do you do all this? So, I have to say, she, my girlfriend, she's a saint, because she never heard that to me. I didn't get any time where I'm like, hey, I gotta go sit on my train after three hours or whatever. Hey, I'm coming out of her and I'll see you in two hours. Doesn't affect her at all. She's, she's really awesome about that. Um, so it definitely makes it easier. But I think the way that I kind of like balance the most is probably not the healthiest. I crammed a lot of stuff in in some short periods of time to basically optimize like my time off, if that makes, uh, if that makes sense. What do you mean? So, uh, so I'm going to give you a quick example of like, uh, one specific event. I had uh, to kind of push a bunch of workouts in once before work. I had work at 1 o'clock. Uh, I went to the track. I did about five miles of zone four track work. And then went to the gym. Um, did a quick uh, light workout. And then I did a quick swim. And then I went, went off to work. And then came back at night, went to bed. And then the next morning, I actually had a double shift, so I had to work at 6.30 in the morning to 2.30. And then I had to go back to work at night at 10.30 to the following morning, 6.30 in the morning. And in between that, I think I threw, if I remember correctly, I think I threw like a three-hour bike in between the air. So basically, I got out of work, did a couple things, three-hour bike, ate dinner, showered, and then went back to work. And then the next morning when I came off of work, I then had, I think it was a long, like, 10 mile run. And I basically got off my morning shift, no sleep, and just only a 10 mile run. And then just kind of roughed it so that I kind of had a whole rest of the day to spend my girlfriend and friends, family, stuff like that. What is the idea on the thing from all this? What are you doing? 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 They're not, they're definitely not happy when I kind of do those things. Like, I think those, I maybe got like three hours of sleep on my like, breaks in between work. They're not, they're not happy about it, but, you know, you know, I get my workouts done. I tend to, I'll, I'll make up the sleep if that's, uh, I guess, uh, make the thing that's going to happen. I don't want to say that. I'm saying everything, you know, if I can just get done every day, that'd be awesome. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know how happy about it, but it's, uh, you know, for me to balance life and to, uh, to keep uh, my friends and family and everyone still around, it's, it's just kind of how to make it work. So, uh, let's dive into this a little bit more here. So, you had that three-hour 
turned on 25 minutes, and I was like, all right. And I did a little look and see it was a little hot. And then I looked at the check-in line, and there was no one there. I looked around, definitely briefing, briefing there, there. And uh, there was everyone here. So in my mind, I went to the middle of the scene. That's not everyone's going to go on it. So I walked away, went on the check-in, check in, got everything done. And then I was done. I turned around. It was all, the briefing was over. And that line was racking with how many people on yeah, so I'm going to get it that way because it went really, really smooth. So, uh, nutrition, your beautiful nutrition plan, what's breakfast, what's your dinner look like for you? I try to keep it the same as pretty much my entire training is just standing on a little bit more carbs, more in the love I have, oatmeal, some honey. Um, I had a protein shake that morning and some of the issues because I thought that might be a little bit better in my stomach. Rather than I had chicken, rice, and vegetables, uh, steak, sweet potato, vegetables. One thing I do really love before releases is uh, those honey beet pretzel twists. So I always make sure to get a nice big cup of those. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever had them there. I forget what company makes them, but they're honey beet pretzels there. Just these, like, twisted little pretzels that uh, you can kind of get at, like, any sort of place, but I uh, would get a big tub of those and just kind of snap it and get those to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I should have put that on. I don't want to get a bad third of the way through, but. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, you're, you take everything in. What was your anxiety level and stress level like the day before the race? Did your girlfriend there have coffee? Did it not? What are you talking to your coaches about? What's going on? What's your stress level like? I'll be honest, I really didn't feel that stress. I think, number one, I'm done quasi in that course. I kind of felt like when I got my flight for 78, I really felt like, you know, really didn't know how to train down where I felt so confident that, all right, I knew I could finish the race. I felt like I was pretty confident in getting the pieces I wanted for everything. So I don't really think I had that much kind of stress before the race. And uh, I mean, my girlfriend there definitely helped out a lot because it was kind of making sure she had fun with the going on off of worrying about the race and just making sure that you enjoyed yourself and kind of showing her like what it was like and what the environment was like. So I took a little bit of stress and pressure off myself too. That's good. So, um, you know, for the race, I know you said you got to see Santa Claus this week, but was that really good sleep or was that just not a little bit of a better yellow sleep here in March week? No, it was actually really good sleep. Um, I pitched a little bit, so I didn't kind of do this, uh, I guess, um, makeup of things. I, I take two a week, um, about six milligrams of uh, fast dissolving melatonin. And um, those new and reverse tablets. And I take that probably about a half hour, 45 minutes before, but then you let go to sleep, and I kind of really add a lot of it. I always listen to uh, 
Linkin Park's album of the year, and for some reason that album gets me like kind of amped up and focused at the same time. But it me, so that's where my that's where I career is for July. I listen to that album. You know, I'm not going to come back to that one hand. I mean, people listen to music that actually disclose their music to people. I mean, most of the people are like, no, you're not knowing that. You're not going to get you in my head. That's my head. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to open my book. And so, uh, you, you know, we're going to finish this. You're listening to your jams. And you're getting ready. What's the atmosphere going to like in transition for you? Is there a bunch of stress? 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 So, in a age group where I mean, I can feel any tension, the people adjacent to my bike rack were actually the first time in um, if I ran competitors to do so. We were just going to talk in there as we had my first race. It was pretty late back. I actually I ran into a uh, triathlon town and uh, Jeff Fairbanks from Team Triathlon. No, I did not. Yeah, he like put a fog in on it. He went up on the show once and he had like a nice and trolled me and his bike there. Yeah. I mean, he did a little bit of a bad idea. Yeah, I was just saying, it looked like he was in pretty good spirits. Yeah, at that point. And then they're like, we're going to go slow down. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, um, so I mean, the bike there is pretty cool. Um, I actually ran in on my coaches on her own. They're on Team Talk Train. So uh, I had ran into a bunch of those people on the team. Everyone was super nice, real positive, and just kind of like everyone was just talking and, and having you know, good fun. So uh, I think it was a very uh, high tension kind of going on there. Okay. So uh, you get really good at and you head over to the start. What is your mindset here going into this race? Do you have a feeling that this is going to be a PR? Do you know that this is going to be a good day? Because what we haven't mentioned so far is the weather. You didn't pay any close attention to this weather settle that's come over in certain main things. And those things are going to remain, and you're not sure what this is like for you. So, the weather, right? You know, what always concerns me is getting swims canceled or swims shortened. Because that's actually what happened at Connecticut. They shortened that swim. So, in my head, I was like, well, I've never really done 70.3 because I never did a full one. So, that was definitely a lot of a bit of a concern of mine. I wanted to make sure that nothing got canceled. And I was actually able to get in the water and do the full distance. So, that was definitely a little bit in the back of my mind. The other thing that was kind of heavy on my mind is I was mentioned before I was having some some GI issues and I was running back and forth in port potties throughout several diet transitions. So I was actually starting to get to the point where I really thought there was going to be some issues during the race. Luckily there wasn't, but that was probably one of the four things in the forefront of my mind is is my stomach going to hold up for this race. So whenever you get to this and start the finish for that time to get those off for there's no pros here, it's just an issue of price, right? You don't think there's pros? Um, I'll be honest, I'm not sure. I don't think there's pros here. So, the late game that we go off, where do you see yourself? And then, do you see yourself accordingly? Like, like, this is the wrong start, do you see yourself in the middle? Yes, I see it in myself in the 45 to 36 minute time block. So, um, actually, I was kind of like right in the middle of the pack, and it actually worked out perfectly considering you know, my time. Okay. So, uh, you get the water, and you just don't go with her. So, I did like to get off the bed, I just get in. I my head up and look, and the inside was packed. So it's a, it's a right turning uh, tunnel, and it was just a mosh pit along the inside of the right hand side. So I quickly said to myself, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to try to climb back in the swim. I mean, swimming's not my thing. 
I fall asleep through this with no, you know, being kicked in the face, no losing my goggles, and I just stayed as far left as I could. I was actually closer to the guys in the kayaks and the stand-up paddle boarders than I was the edge of the kind of mosh pit shooters. Wow. And you didn't get bigger again? No, I didn't. I don't think there was somebody with the closest person probably got to me was maybe five feet. Wow. So, but it's just all worse, you know. Like, I don't know. Like, they get you off guard, then it's taste and texture. No, um, I, where I live, I'm 15, 20 minutes from the beach. So, all of my open water swims, except for maybe one, is done in ocean water. Very, very similar to, to the water over there. So, for me, it was, it was, uh, it was kind of like home. Okay. So, with this meal, you get a step that you would get somebody that hasn't done this race before. I think I basically said, I mean, the outside lane is definitely your friend. The way that the swim turns, I was able to take the out of the leg all the way to the left hand side. And then as I came up to the turn buoy, I just kind of cut it, cut it short towards the turn buoy. Get around the outside, same thing on the out, the leg back in, stay flat on the side, and then right as I came to that final turn, just took a cut in. And I think it added maybe 100 to 150 yards total on the swim. So it kept me out of every time to believe you make the swim out of a smaller ride by cutting those turns like that. Okay. So, all right, you get done with the swim. You have 37 minutes and 12 seconds. You have an exit finish in the day. Thank you. 
thinking of applying at this point because yeah. in either way, you probably don't do that too often. No, actually, when I first moved in, I never rode the ring um, because I was on the trainer this whole time. And because oh, I got lucky my last time training for Connecticut, I've never rode my road bike in the rain. And it's my first year, I don't really have that great technology. So my tires are pretty just generic, no name brand type of tires. I was kind of nervous. I was taking the turns very, very carefully. I didn't want to really push anything. And uh, I'm glad I did because there were, there's quite a few wrecks actually. And you still threw it in on that two point two, which is quite respectable, especially for your second one. And being so young in the sport, that's that's kind of like a like you should be proud of yourself for that. Thank you. Um, but then I said, let's talk a little bit about your nutrition plan here. Um, you're getting full of water at 48 calories an hour. Um, how do you want to make this? So I uh we're gonna transition this is probably part of what sends me down to I uh I eat uh, one, eight, one crystal, and then I throw another one inside my kit. Uh, then I also have a uh, custom infinite uh, nutrition formula. So I have three uh, hour bottles on my bike, one in my hour bars, on the hour bottle, and then two in uh, bottle cages. Okay. Now, that's the plan, but how do you execute this plan? I just kind of put them on evenly spaced throughout the throughout the whole ride. There was no issues. I got lucky. A lot of people that lost. There was a lot of debris on the course, so there are people whose nutrition actually. My coach Danielle lost both of her nutrition models, so uh, it actually worked out perfect. They kept all my models, and nothing dropped, and uh, it was my favorite. No. So, with the bike ride in the rain, bring your waters on. How did you feel about this? The first like, five miles, I was I was a little nervous. I was being pretty cautious, um, but I, I kind of took it off pretty quick. Um, it didn't really bother me after that. I just I just kind of seemed focused. I said, "All right, it is what it is. It's not that big control. Just be smart. Don't do things stupid, and just ride the way you know what I mean." So. This race course, what's some advice you give to anybody that hasn't done this course before that's doing this in the future? Definitely, it seems like make sure that your, your equipment's like tightened down. I actually saw a full arrow bottle. Somebody's arrow bottle came over the bars full with whatever kind of nutrition they had in there. Like I said, my coach lost her bottles. Um, she was actually breaking the bike, so I don't know what happened, but it. it just fell off. Um, I mean, it was just people were dropping and using cell phone that they left them away. So it, there's, a, there's a big section of the course that's pretty bumpy. It's got some little potholes, a lot of bumps. So I would definitely say make sure you got everything from the um, Other than that, I mean, definitely train flat. So for, for me, with kind of the cow sweeps to the hills, I was glad that I got used to just like a constant, constant spin. Because now it's definitely different from my legs. Being a flat course and using the same muscles consistently, um, I felt good about it, but I mean, it's definitely different from what I was used to in Connecticut. So definitely train on flat courses before you do this. Okay. Now, tell me about how do you are an advocate for having a strong mental game? I think this race specifically, I've been so many times within the race that, and I think everyone has this happening, that your mind starts to take over, you know, you train hard, you know, things are, you know, in place, and something happens, your, your legs get fatigued, uh, there's a, there's a mess up, like you feel like you mess up your watch or whatever it may be, and I feel like there's like pivotal moments where, you can make a break your race. If you like your mind kind of goes start going negative and you, and you let it take over, your pace slows up, you start getting down and you off, and you know, the race starts to take a turn. But I really do have to strive. I mean, my girlfriend didn't know, can you test this on the on this in the podcast, reading books, and just trying to keep my kind of mind in, 
Captain Shark. Um, I'm a huge, huge, uh, I don't know if you know David Goggins. Yeah, I read book, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a huge, huge fan of his song. I'm just really trying to constantly feed myself things like that. They're going to kind of make sure that anytime something comes at me negative, I can, I can say, all right, this is how you can react. And you still fall, work hard, and you just stay focused. That's pretty awesome, man. I think I did some singers when I picked shirt. But, you know, you see your bars in the first round, your pictures are playing because you sit uncomfortable, which that means you have to take extra culture. And you see all these balls everywhere. It's pouring down rain. You have it at the middle of your own act and it's playing right now. And it's so easy for you to just say, no, understand that we have that one. It's a really good thing, though, because they have been this for safety reasons. I mean, you can easily say that to yourself, but hey, you know, it's going to rain. There's rest in here. I don't want to play this game for my safety. Can't not do this anymore, but you're using this mindset. You have to go, no, I'm doing what's safe. I'm playing the right cards here. And I'm going to keep going. I'm not running with my feet. It's going to be okay. And I'm going to look for it. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is you gotta just kind of catch yourself. You know, we all, it's not like anyone special that grows everyone. I mean, everyone gets that point where part of your mind tries to tell you, that's it, just quit. It's better. You come across and you see every type of option that you're possibly needing to say to yourself, like, hey, this is a good idea. And I think where it comes down to is like, I love using this phrase a lot. It's like, well, if you still are, it's the same time you're giving yourself an excuse. You're just trying to make yourself kind of feel comfortable and say, oh, this is okay. But at the end of the day, it's not. You just got to gotta push forward. And you'll, you'll surprise yourself while you're able to do. Yeah. That's really awesome. So, with the bike ride, you're getting your new trip right in, but you're seeing all this debris on the road. Are you also seeing all the flats? Yeah. Uh, I, so it's a little price. I think I saw upwards of 10 flats per every loop in three loops. I mean, it was really, really bad out there. Wow. So now, I've never changed that flat during an actual race. And it's like, you can't stand a flat during a race. I would want to be a brain. Because they do have a flat cell. Yeah, definitely. And so, as far as the bike ride goes, I mean, you're pretty up at 242 this day. How do you feel about this during the race? Did you have any metrics you're looking at as far as like heart rate, power, cadence? Do you have anything that you're looking at? So I don't have power. Um, but we, like we said, they are going right off of heart rate. So I was keeping my heart rate probably around 160 um, beats per minute. And then I was also just kind of, as like a side kind of thing, looking at my cadence. And I'm making sure I was kind of still around at 98 and 100 revolutions per minute. And then I was also trying to keep my speed above 20. Um, whenever I felt that my heart rate was going to be big. Okay. Now, with my friend, you get to the point where I had, you really have to say it off, not like you have to with your watch because you fumble with that. But I was going to say, you have to fumble with it again in T2.
you know, a quarter of a million dollars for an LA. I think it was like six fifty eight. It's kind of like the power of the trust rule when you like tone it down a little. It's kind of hard to get it and kind of caught up to me yet. Um, but it's still okay. Um, it definitely felt like there was a little bit of that, you know, but it, it wasn't anything else concerned at that time, at least. Right. You know, at some point, there were some stairs near the other one of the city, and you're trying to explain to me at this point, what was the next one? So, this was probably, in terms of around the hardest part, it was a perfect storm. So, about a quarter mile before, there is a short flight of stairs down to capture sand to take cover with a like blue mat that they didn't lay down pretty flat, so it was kind of like all these bumps to it. Um, but a quarter mile before that point, uh, I saw my girlfriend and I knew she was going to be there because we were staying at the hotel right around there. And the last thing I wanted to do was run by her looking dead and slowly exhausted. So she's probably about, I think it was mile eight. And so I pick up the pace, I'm going to stop, I think it's a very nice car, and, and I'm going to feel good because I know I'm going to be seeing her. I pass her, I got this extra boost from seeing her, all happy, you know, filming me. And then about a quarter mile after seeing her, my legs just, they felt like they were about to cramp up, they are getting wobbly, and then it came to my tongue breaks. And right as it hit me, I look, and there's the turn. But like six, seven steps down to the sand, and then this mat covered in sand. And I'm like, this is a stick jump. This was like, ran perfectly for me. <laughs> so, I, I literally, I, 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 I've heard a lot of people say on this podcast, like, hey, you, you kind of talk to yourself as crazy as it is, but I kept saying to myself, like, like I'm going to take more of an electro line. Just keep moving your legs around, and just keep moving your legs around, and just keep moving. And I think I just felt this kind of thing. I made sure I was not tripping up on the mat on the stand. I kept saying that to myself, and I just kept making sure I kept my run cadence up. And I would say probably about a quarter of a mile later, I think we saw it. And I ran, and the legs felt fine again. My pace picked back up a little bit, and it was like, I was right back where I left off. So, Yeah, there was one thing I loved the caffeine. So I took 
two right away once I got on the run. Uh, four miles later, I took another two, and then um, and then I took another two, and you know, the rest of my nutrition is just kind of like what I'm feeling. I just have to get stations, mostly water, but if I'm feeling like a pregnant girl or a little bit of a bull, and here and there, I'll, I'll drink that too. Okay. So, when we talk to the Phoenix, and I work with you, at that point in time, what do you yeah, uh, unfortunately, pretty high tolerance for caffeine. So, uh, it's never really concerned that I've done plenty of training with a lot of caffeine. So, I don't know how I feel, and that really bothers me. I see that you're living on your bowl of beer. Yeah, I'm a bowl of coffee, a little bit. I mean, I know you're crazy, but the schedule is not going to be the most state and you can do some funny stuff there. <laughs> so, with the run course, how do you feel like this run course is your athletic uh, ability? Oh, I'm really good. I mean, it's, it's flat. It's pretty, pretty flat. Um, the board works really nice. It, you know, it's stable. The only areas that were a little wobbly really were like right in the middle where there was a seam. But it, it, I feel like for me personally, the run is probably where I feel the strongest. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I felt performance wise, it was, it was perfect for me. It was definitely hot. <laughs> um, if I was glad that I had done a lot of really, really hot runs going up to this because it got pretty hot that day. Right. Now, basically, I mean, overall, if you had to rate the entire race, because the snow was choppy, you know, it's very simple this morning, you know, and then the bike was. She was running pretty neck and neck with me. 
And I said, girl, I'm like, all right, hey, you want to start trying to pick some of these people off? And she's like, well, I'm like, it's, it's my car, I feel like trying to, like, get up, you know, from a kind of like a letter to the next person. So, uh, I just, she did that for me for, like, two people, and I kind of used that to help push me through, like, maybe the last, you know, point two before the, the kind of, the last little leg. And then, um, that's like kind of like me. There's like a curve you come down, like this pier, and then you can see everyone lining up. You hear the bells, you see the red carpet, and I um, really so I was pretty happy. I didn't realize I didn't know what I was doing. I was just happy that I, I, I got a real full 70.3 in my belt. And, uh, you know, it was a tough day, and I was just I was really, really excited. So I was going to hear that, and it was over. So when did you know that it was going to be a PR for you? So, um, I'll be honest, I'm not looking, I actually did get emotional at this point, so I really went on the red carpet. Yeah, I got a little emotional. I crossed the finish line, grabbed my medal, took the picture, get water, and my girlfriend comes around to where I was, the line was where it was halfway to me. So I get up to her, she comes up to me, and she's all excited, and she's smiling, and I get to her kiss, and she's like, I'm so proud of you, and and all of a sudden she takes her phone and she holds her phone up to me. And then she had the tracker on the phone. And I look at the time and I see, you know, for that last 24 minutes, 27 seconds. And then I remember, like, staring at the number, like, I was thinking, like, she must be still showing me, like, her own number, which, like, she's tracking somebody wrong. And I just said, wait, what? And she's like, that, that's your time. And then she did what I was going to shoot for, because I had shit next day. And, um, I think I was probably going for like five hours, 45 minutes. Somewhere around there was like, that was really where I thought I was going to end up. And I didn't know how close I was to that just because of the conditions. And when it ended, she's like, yeah, like, that's, that's your time. And I, I, I got choked up a little bit because I it was like, at that point I realized all the work, all the lack of sleep, training, and everything, like, I only did what I thought it was to do more, and, and I was, I was really, really proud of it. Now, that's the feel, that's the feel, that you know, you should feel like I'm going to pay it off, and it was worth it. Yeah, and then the, even right after that, uh, my coach, he finished just before me, I had an whole trial team where, where, you know, on the athlete's side, watch everyone come in, and I came up to him, and he's like, hey, man, what you do? You know, I can well, please. He had kind of pissed me down the road a couple times. And he was seated uh, ahead of me in the swim. So he's like, how'd you get him? I was like, God, I got five hours, 24 minutes, 27 seconds. He's like, oh, shit, no way, man. And he's like, oh, that fuck. And, and I was like, God, you have me on the ground, man. I'm like, this is, this is a really good race. And then he even turned to me right away. And he was like, oh, we're getting you on the five next year. I was like, oh, shit, this is, this is real. <laughs> so, after the race, so you're fine, you know, how did you recover from this test Pretty good. Um, I was, uh, we actually stayed in the Atlantic City, and it was actually my birthday on Saturday, so it was a race slash birthday celebration on Sunday night. Really? So, what's up with that? Um, we went up there, uh, had a couple of margaritas, walked on the boardwalk. Or I just kind of got kind of lifted up. Everything I haven't done for the past 13 weeks and I just drank and had fun. I had a cigar. Yeah, I had a cigar with a board or a crack. I was just living my life. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, you remember you know, that fun stuff and uh, it's a few days later. How do you feel about what you did? Uh, I'm feeling great. Uh, I think it was just. I was actually at the uh, physical therapy and I was just kind of working on it. Some of the last little stories out and my physical therapist I've been going to for a long time. Uh, and he turns to me and goes, you know, so man, you're a real triathlete now. And I was like, oh man, I'm like, he's like, hey, you know, you're doing all these races. And then it kind of hit me. I'm like, I went from around March, so I didn't probably have to try to do one of these things just to like, oh, let's see if I can do it. And then I'm um, up sometimes and I'm respectable and I'm loving the sport. And, I'm not already looking like, all right, what's next for me? What's going on next year? You know, looking at tri-bikes now, it's like, it's, uh, I think 
I really, really, really fell in love with this story. That's pretty awesome. So, the current point that I raised the other day is that. No, um, I mean, you know, I, I can't tell you my girlfriend, I think she's an author of everything that they support me for. It, it was, uh, it's been a fun ride, and, and this was just, this race kind of just tied it all up, put it all in, and I felt really good about it. So, are you going to try to go to the TV show to see what you're next year? Uh, you know, I'm kind of one of those people who kind of like put something out there and say, oh, I don't want to do this, I want to do that. I mean, I just really want to just push myself as far as possible. I, I will say, I definitely want to go into five hours, that's 100% of the money. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep focusing on training hard and do the right things, and kind of whatever comes my way comes my way. Well, so, what's next for you? Uh, travel a little I'm done for the year. I got a uh, I got a 10K on Saturday, which will be fun. That's just really one of our fun rides. I'll probably do a couple small little, like, fun races. Um, and then, actually, I think after this, I'm going to meet up with both my coaches, Ray and Danielle, and we're going to really talk about, you know, what's next and, and what the plan is. I, I definitely, you know, we'll full Iron Man, he's on the horizon for me. Uh, what brings when exactly, I'm not sure, but I'm definitely going to do a full day to get that out of my belt. So, uh, looking forward here, you're looking for a full day here, way back, you got this board. Now, where do you see yourself in a few years from now? Well, um, I have the outside, you know, obviously, this is, uh, this is a hobby for me. Um, you know, we're in, you know, the whole from family and all that stuff is priority, but I like to see this just becoming like, you know, a huge, huge part of my everyday life, and hopefully in a few years, I'm, I'm putting so much back the time, so I'm, I'm doing some good placements within my age group, and uh, just kind of continuing uh, to get better and better on this board. So, what are you talking about for this guy? Ah, Oceanside. I just like to talk about this little podcast, Oceanside's definitely out there, something about I'm not a surfer. So something about having to push through some breaking waves is uh, kind of uh, excites me a little bit. So I was concerned stuff me up there, and I did have a friend that moved out to California, so um, that's there. And then, well, Metropolitan, too. I heard that's a beautiful course. Yeah, yeah. This is the only one I would like to do. So, uh, how do you feel about it, man? I don't know. I have a history of account. It's at... Uh, number two, and I, it's where I kind of keep uh, all my bags kind of on stuff and writing stuff on there. And that's the kind of fun hack. It's F A P A T H. So, uh, I'll have one more question for you, man. And that's what's your definition of a perfect race? Well, okay, this is definitely very, very close to it um, for me. I think the perfect race, and it's kind of the really reason why I do this, is having some points in the race where you really feel like you're hitting a challenge and you can maybe reach like your limit. And it's this goal and end goal. And you gotta dig deep and you gotta kind of discover really truly what you are capable of. So it's something where you can kind of finish the race and say, hey, I broke some sort of boundary for myself. And, uh, like I said, I think this was definitely up there for me, and but I'm sure I'll have plenty of other times in my, uh, my racing career that'll be like that, too. So, yeah, I think that's all I need to race for you, and I'm glad that we're going to have a few minutes to do that, based on you, you know, with us over and over again. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. I'll uh, see some pictures from the race that I'm going to have to put up at the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Just was a lot of fun and uh and it has to be some stuff to appreciate. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you were able to learn something from today's episode. If you enjoy the show, please take a minute to leave a review on iTunes or share it with a friend. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to see pictures from this athlete's race, learn more about who I am, what I'm doing, or be on the show yourself to share your story, check out my website at CoachTerryWilson.com. 
Until next time, continue the pursuit.